Welcome to the Meditation Conversation, the podcast to support your spiritual revolution. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin. All right, Disclosure friends, I'm really excited to bring this episode with Nancy Thames to you. We have a fascinating discussion about interdimensionals and extraterrestrials, and she shares about the contact experiences she's had her whole life and her evolving understanding of their purpose. You might be surprised about her thoughts about reptilians and greys and how the ET world relates to and is different from the spirit realms. Nancy Thames, a former Department of Defense employee and lifelong contactee of interdimensional extraterrestrial beings, is passionate about alien disclosure and spiritual awakening. Her journey, marked by personal struggles, transformed profoundly through her continuous extraterrestrial encounters. These experiences, initially suppressed, were eventually embraced as Nancy began to understand their purpose in her life and for humanity. She believes strongly that the time has come for disclosure, and she's the creator of TimeForDisclosure.com, a platform advocating for open dialogue about extraterrestrial interactions and the greater implications for humanity. Nancy's work underscores a collective call to awakening, She stresses that experiences often labeled as abductions are, in her understanding, enlightened contacts, part of a broader benevolent interaction with extraterrestrial entities aiming to usher humanity into a new era of cosmic participation. This mission, conveyed through her writing and community engagement, is driven by a philosophy of unity, spiritual evolution, and the pursuit of truth extending an invitation to all of humanity to acknowledge and embrace our place within the larger galactic framework. So before we get started, just a quick word about Camuso. Take control of your stress with this necklace that is not only beautiful, but powerful. It works within seconds, has zero maintenance, and helps you increase focus, lower your heart rate, sleep better, and reduce your anxiety. This is such a great product Check out episode 240, where I talk to the founder, Todd Steinberg. That episode is packed with useful insights about how to calm your body and mind. Use promo code KaraGoodwin15 to get 15% off. Check out all the partners of the Meditation Conversation podcast, which you can get to through themeditationconversation.com. And now enjoy this episode. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm very proud to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you. This is a a very um, important topic, and it is a fun one, too. I I always enjoy talking about interdimensionality and ETs and disclosure and so forth. So it's really a joy to have you here today. Thank you so much. Yes. So let's just start by talking about your journey and how you came to be focused on disclosure. I am a lifelong contactee with interdimensional extraterrestrials. And I, when I say that, I, what I'm implying or what I'm revealing is that all extraterrestrials, I have interaction with all extraterrestrials and I'm coming to the conclusion belief system. I pretty much feel it all within and I feel like that's what they've been telling me. They are all interdimensional. So my experiences started from birth and even be, before that. Um, so I've been doing this for 64 years and every day of my life, it is something new. Even if I'm not physically face-to-face contact with them, they are in my dreams. They are sending me messages because every day, every human being is here on earth. Our soul came here with a purpose. We chose to be here and we all chose to be here at this momentous time in the history of humankind. So this has been a journey of me figuring out who I am, not the Nancy the world has created, but the Nancy inside the soul self with no name, the soul self that came here, chose to be here and has a purpose. And I have getting closer and closer every day as I age to figuring this all out. And I think that's what is happening here on earth. This is not disclosure of just extraterrestrials or 
things that were hidden and suppressed from us. This is a disclosure of humans figuring out who we are, our true origins, and our place not only on our planet Earth, but also how we belong to the cosmic realm. Or sometimes we may have to look at this, that is, if there is a cosmic realm, but the interdimensional factors involved in all this are, they could be a lot closer in our reality than we realize. And what I mean is that dimensions are not physical places. They're higher levels of consciousness. So we're always trying to label and name things as human nature. But the reality of the dimensions is that just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not all around us and a lot closer than we realize. So this is a pivotal moment for many, many things on our planet Earth and the universe and every race out there around us are paying attention and witnessing, you know, how we evolve because this is a big step. So for me, this is a, a never ending journey that is just really just the beginning because I am now myself just figuring out who I am, why I came here, and I'm here to help humanity understand our places, you know, our uniqueness, uh, misinformation, so many different things. So, you know, I have all these contact to experiences and they were building me up to who I am today to present the information and knowledge that they've given me. And I don't claim to know everything and I'm certainly not perfect. And none of us are, we'll never be perfect. We're human. But we have to learn to strive to become the better version of ourselves. So I'm still in my process. Yeah, I love it. So I want to talk about this interdimensional that you've been mentioning. So in case there's anybody who has heard of extra dimensional or extraterrestrial, let's talk a little bit about this term interdimensional. What do you mean by the contact experiences that you've had with interdimensional beings? Well, like I said, as we, as I further evolve, as I further have a deeper understanding, which is part of our ascension, is awareness, understanding. You know, we're all experiencing this, so I'm experiencing this as well. So the interdimensionals are of a higher frequency, and they are of a higher stage of evolution. They are billions of years ahead of us in terms of evolution. So, you know, we are at a um, area of learning. We're juvenile, in, so to speak, in these avenues of understanding our world around us and even our planet Earth. So they are all around us and they're interacting with us. And we simply don't see these things because we only use our five senses to understand our reality and the world around us. But through this ascension and what they're teaching me through these and taking me to these interdimensional higher realms is that there's things all around us that we simply don't see. You know, we always look up to the skies, but I think we need to focus a lot on realizing there's things beyond our visual range, not that far away. And I also think from what they're teaching me, we need to look at our bodies of water because water is an element of, of a part of our life, but it's also a frequency. It's also a living conscious being, which I'm beginning to think that, or what I'm sensing from them and where they're leading me is that it is a conduit, conduit to higher understanding of many practical purposes that we could utilize here on earth. You know, we see them going in and out of our water. So there's some reason they're going down there. And it seems to be that we always want to explore up. But I think we need to explore our bodies of water. I think there's a lot of information and we can learn a lot about our interdimensional possibility because we are multidimensional. And I think we're just now figuring this out because 
our souls chose to come to earth and we are in a temporary vessel and this is a temporary experience. So, you know, we're, we're even just now kind of off as a humanity wide concept, figuring out that we are multidimensional. Our souls continue on, you know, this avatar human existence will end, but we're also going to learn that we will not grieve this process in our futures. We will understand it is a graduation to a higher self, a soul purpose. So I think we'll learn to start enjoying our existence existence here on this planet more by having this understanding and learn the quality of oneness, unity, and focusing not so much on negativity anymore or separation or division, but more of a oneness and unity and cooperation because it's pretty evident to me that if we stay in this negative rim, civilization as we know it is going to demise in some way by our abuse or our misuse of technology. So with this awakening, what what I what they're telling me is that we can use this to our advantage advantage to enable us to have longer lifespans, to increase our awareness and intellect to understand that we can use AI in these beautiful, beautiful ways and have less focus on earning materialistic things when AI can do a lot of that generating for us and allow us to have more focus on ourselves and our families and our quality of life. So it goes, the more every day I wake up, it just gets deeper, deeper, and deeper. Yes. I love it. Well, so what has your contact contact experience been like? What has it been like for you? Because I understand that you've been having this, like you said, your whole life. But it seems as though you maybe you rather recently realized that this was happening or you've changed your understanding of it or or what about the length of time and what it has been like for you? I've I've always known what has changed is my understanding of the purpose. You know, I've had periods of time when I was very young. It was playful fun. You know, I look forward to it. I loved it. Uh, and then when I became junior high or high school age, going to school and the world around me, you know, influences, you know, going to school and, and being told that the things that I was experiencing was not possible, telling me that they were either demonic or that they were either uh, a mental health issue, you know, for they would pe- put people, you know, in mental institutions were talking about these things. So my parents always told me, you cannot talk about these things. The world does not want to hear this. The world is not ready. So I learned to suppress it. So when I was about junior high or high school age, I started hearing other stories of people that were having experience and they were not like what I was experiencing. But being human made me question my experiences. So I began to experience fear, anxiety, that I'd never even felt before. So when they would come for me, I was a different young lady. I was not the little girl that was all gun ho and stuff. Because of them being telepathic, they can also read our feelings and emotions. They know everything we're thinking. So with that, you know, the experience had to change because they're here on a mission and on a task. And so when they sense my fear, they feel it 10 times the amount that I feel because in their reality, there is no such thing as negativity, fear, anger, wars. There, there is no negative aspect because they are billions of years ahead of us. And through their own evolution, these things were dismissed or no longer used because they realized it was of no service to their kind anymore. And they, to be able to be in a civilization that continues for billions of years, you have to get rid of these divisions and negativity, all these things that separate 
your society. So when they sense that with the humans and start feeling that, they started to touch me on the forehead and put me in a blacked out state. You know, they can either do that by touching or they can do it consciously as well. And this is why you hear many, many humans come back and say they have missing time or fragmented memories. And this is because of the extreme fear, anger, uh, anxiety that a human, their reaction. And for me, I can't speak for everyone else, but for me, it has never been what they look like. For me, it is the frequency exchange between a human being and a higher level extraterrestrial or interdimensional. And for whatever reason, when I was younger, I don't recall feeling that frequency exchange, but I had no fear. I had no influences. There was nothing back here in my brain data banks to influence me and have me have these different feelings. But for whatever reason, when I became more conscious of the experiences and started anticipating things in my own mind, I could feel the frequency exchange and my brain did not, did not know how to cope with this frequency exchange because it is an extreme feeling you never feel on earth. And it's a combination of extreme fear and extreme euphoria. And this is not something that we, that occurs on our daily life. So our brains will naturally see it as a predator and then the fear becomes extreme fear. And that is what we have to learn to overcome on this whole planet as a human race. You know, we cannot let fear limit us from the growth of our souls, the growth of our own human experience here on earth. We cannot let this misinformation lead us into denial, lead us into not exploring things that are there for our growth. Right, right. Well, so from, if we talk more about maybe starting from what you remember the earlier times when you weren't ex exhibiting fear, when these were happening, tell us what the actual experience has been like. So I understand that you've had an evolution of how you felt about it, but what has it actually been for you? Have it, Has this been like physical beings who show up in front of you, take you on a ship, and your physical body is on a ship? Is it more like you fall asleep and there is a very lucid conscious experience where you know you're not dreaming, but it's happening kind of more um, like remotely? What, what has that been like? For me, it has always been face-to-face -face physical contact. And when I started to have the extreme fear, because they don't like that feeling and because that's something that I had to work out for myself, they black me out. So I would go through the whole experience. I would have fragmented memories. And what they were doing is that they were leaving, allowing me bits and pieces so that when I came back to home and start to process this, I would realize that I had to work on myself and I didn't get this just like that, I mean, you know, and I had to realize that in order to have a more solid, fluid, conscious recollection of the experience, I had to eliminate the fear. So they gave me fragmented memories to help me figure that out. And like I said, it didn't happen overnight, but as I did start to figure it out, what I I've always had this ability, and I now realize they do this intentionally. 15 minutes before they manifest into wherever I am in a room, wherever, I get a frequency elevation in my body. My frequency changes, and it starts to rape, rise above what it is. And so I know that they're coming. That gives me time to work and process in my mind how I'm going to do this. So 
since I decided I wanted to increase my conscious time back to like it was when I was little, then I would talk to my mind, talk to my inner self self, uh, inner self and say, okay, we know what this is. We are not going to let the fear take over and limit us. We are going to push through this fear and experience the whole experience. And so I started doing this. And, and this is not something that occurs on a daily basis, you know, but when it would occur, I would get it right, then fail. That happened quite a bit. You know, I didn't get it right immediately, but I had, it was a process and I eventually got to the point where I could stay fully conscious and they were so proud of me. I mean, and I was so proud of myself. So it's not an easy process because your brain is firing out fear. You know, it's like that uh, fight or flight type mode. Like if you can imagine what it was, must have felt like for a person, a human in the period of time of the dinosaur, all of a sudden seeing a dinosaur and, you know, it's kind of like that extreme fear. So you have to push through it and work yourself up to where you can do this. It's, it's not an easy process. So do you have an idea of where these beings are from? And are they always the same beings, the same species? Yes. It, they are always the same beings. Um, they send a high, three hybrid grays have always been with me since birth and even before my birth. Um, they've showed me visions of myself and I was an interdimensional being before I came to earth and I made a decision to come here and be part of this process of the evolution. So when they always send the three grays and one is a female, she is reddish brown and she is a hybrid that was created by the tall grays and the interdimensionals. Extraterrestrials and interdimensionals do not do not like the density of earth, which means they do not like the density of this frequency in our dimension. They, you know, they are of a higher frequency and to come down into these lower levels is very, very uncomfortable. So they create the hybrid to do the legwork for them. So she comes here and prepares me for the trip. And when I was younger, she would take a handheld device and run it up and down, down and up. And then my body would start to vibrate at a higher frequency. And I would start, my body would even start to kind of like float off the bed or off the floor. And she would take me by the hand and lead me through an attic or the roof or through a door or a window. And that was another thing as a young teenager i could not understand how is this possible because humans are not able to do this but now i understand being much older and from their expressing to me that they were taking my lower frequency as a human using their device and increasing my frequency to match their frequency and i was able to do this with them so and I've noticed that even though well, they transport me over the course of years, and especially even now, how it has changed some. Sometimes they do not send the hybrid. Sometimes it just, it's some kind of new way of, I don't know of a word to use, and I hate to say teleport because our concepts of how things are done in their reality usually doesn't apply, but it's some type of transportation, transport system that involves, all I know is that I feel it starting to happen. I, they'll black me out, and then I wake up on craft, have my experience there where I am around the interdimensionals that are about eight foot tall, and they are luminescent, oak looking, and have some facial human-like features, but they're definitely not human. And then I'm around tall grays, many other different grays. There's over 60 different races of grays. 
and I'm around aquatic beings, reptilians, many beings that we don't even know of on Earth, uh, that have no names for, uh, humanoids, uh, many, many beings. So I go to a mothership that is full of all these different races of beings that are, they are the ones that are trying to assist humanity in our evolution in our ascension process and they are very benevolent and and they are not here to take over or control they're simply here to witness and to put in frequencies around of love and unity to try to help boost us into that because there's only so much they can do because human beings are here on free will and they cannot overstep that so that's fascinating. Um, some of the the beings that you mentioned there. So when we think about like gray, like the little grays, for example, reptilians, these stereotypically are known as service to self entities, negative, more negatively oriented entities. But you've been very clear that you understand the experiences that you're having are for the assistance of the ascension of humanity and the planet yes. right now. So can you talk a little bit about how those things go together so that the types of beings that we wouldn't normally associate with evolution and service to others and your experience? Uh, yes. All of those or all of those beings that we perceive as negative are misunderstood. They are one it is false information that is put out by people that do not wish to see humans that do not wish to see us ascend and reach a higher level of consciousness because there is a group of dark when i say dark I, well let me just rephrase that there are a group of elites that control our planet they control and manipulate our world. And part of that manipulation and control is keeping us dumbed down, suppressed from a lot of information, putting out misinformation to influence us to keep separation, division. Oh, they instill negativity into the news on our television stations. They control what what we're exposed to because they want us to be separated in division in fear uh, always contradicting and have an opposition with each other because that keeps us separated which keeps us from reaching ascension in our evolution process when we were created everything we ever needed was put here on this place planet to serve a purpose to help us to survive for whatever need that occurs you know whether it's a in a medicinal form whether it's a plant flower mineral etc you know everything we ever need for our health and well-being was put here so they're sitting on tons of technology and suppressing it because they cannot make money off of humans that are healthy humans that are of higher intelligence and uh, and humans that come together as one and so work together you, in unity. Do you see that elite group as being extraterrestrial or no, completely they human? human? They are okay. human. So what how do like reptilians and the the small grays and things fit in? I have that? met the reptilians and many, many grays. They are not they are, they all have souls and they all believe in a creator source. They are not, they do not work with any dark forces or negative ways. Um, and I understand pretty much the genetic uh, hybridization program uh, because we make a choice to come to earth on a soul level. Our soul cho chooses to come to earth. We decide what experiences and how long our lifespan is here on earth, okay? So sometimes, you know, things occur that wasn't part of our lifespan or our soul contract, and that's why many people have near-death experiences or, 
make a, a miraculous recovery from some things because it was not part of that contracted plan. So, so as we are making these contracts on earth, some of them are to have interactions with the extraterrestrials and interdimensionals to be part of the evolutionary process that they knew was going to occur on our planet, which is why I am here because I was an interdimensional being before and I made an agreement to come here and they showed me in a vision where I did all this and I watched myself being born here on earth in my essence from that soul, my soul essence from that being come into my mother and me become human. So what it is, is that these people that have been, that they call it abductions, they're, that's their wordage because they dealt with it with their knowledge and what was in their information bank and the brain at the time of it occurring. What they don't remember is that their soul made an agreement to be part of the evolutionary process. And what people don't realize is that these beings are billions of years ahead of us in evolution. If you look at what we're able to do genetically with our DNA, what our technology is, we're accusing these beings of being a much more primitive era than we're, we're, what we're even in. So this is a way that the human mind tried to rationalize their experience. And most of them, as they evolve and become more aware and more understanding, come to the conclusion that they misunderstood these interactions with the beings. And the beings, at the time of these occurrences, really did not care about their bedside manner, really didn't care about our how we felt about it because they knew that as we ascend and evolve, which we are going through an evolutionary process, that we would have a better understanding of what that meant. Those, what they were deemed as abductions were enlightened contacts of a higher purpose than what we understood at the time of the occurrence. So they knew that through our evolution, we would understand and figure this out. So they did not take the time to give us a psychology class in the experience because they're task oriented. Right. And they don't have time for all the drama and the emotional aspects of a human being. Yeah, I love your perspective. And I've had Barbara Lamb on the podcast a couple of times, and I know she's um, been instrumental in helping a lot of abductees to see, to kind of through hypnosis to understand a different perspective and help people really come to terms and see it as a benefit. I will just say from my own perspective, I do believe that not every extraterrestrial and interdimensional has our best interest at heart. I think that there is a range of frequencies, as you've been talking about, and there are some. There are many benevolent who are, uh, beings who are here to assist us, who are in service to evolution, who are in service to God and to source. But I do believe it's important for everybody to be discerning, to not assume that every interaction that they have with an extra dimensional or an interdimensional is for their best interest, because we do have a range of beings and frequencies who have access to Earth and everybody wants to play. Not literally everybody. There are plenty of species who are not participating, but there is an empowerment piece that I, I think is important that people claim their sovereignty and know that they are empowered to be able to go with interaction if it, you know, if it feels right to them, but not to assume that every interaction is for their highest good, depending on where they are with their own evolution. Exactly. I agree. But we have to understand there is a spirit realm that is not connected to extraterrestrials or interdimensionals. And in the spirit realm is part of a negative, can be a negative realm. And a lot of people confuse a spirit interaction. And sometimes they will pretend to be 
an extraterrestrial or whatever the human is expecting to see. If they were a, a trickster as a human, they're most likely a trickster in the spirit realm as a ghost or a spirit or whatever. So a lot of people that, you know, I suggest what you do if you ask for affirmation. You know, that's what I do. I ask for affirmation. Show me, affir you know, give me affirmation so that I know you are what you say you are. And I get those from who I interact and do with. And I have physically touched and held, embraced reptilians physically love and embraced graves, many, many different graves. So they are not of the spirit realm. They are very benevolent. They get misunderstood and they get blamed because of their looks, because of the way they look so different from us humans. So it's just like, you know, because something looks more like us, we think might be kinder or whatever. But in their realm, they have evolved past all these negative ways because otherwise they would not make it to where they are now from being in that negative. So most of the things that we hear and is people's perception because they're using their data bank in their brain and from what they've been influenced by or what they think they've experienced. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we have to step back and reevaluate our programming and understand that we have to, by thinking and moving forward, we have to look forward and realize that sometimes we misunderstood something or if we perceive something in the wrong way. But I think everyone should question and not believe anything anybody says because that's the whole point of this. Ascension and evolution is to look within your soul self, your subconscious knows why you came here. It knows what's good and what's evil. It knows everything. It was in those realms before it knows. So I ask my subconscious to open up into my human consciousness and share with me what it knows. And I give it permission to unblock the trauma or blockages to you know, share with me so that I can grow spiritually in, with my soul. And also the interdimensionals gifted me a little over two years ago, a Kundalini awakening. And they did this with my oldest son. Both of my sons are contactees and experiencers just like I am. And the oldest one has had the Kundalini awakening, ha has all the face-to-face -face and all the downloads and things that I get. So we all came from an interdimensional realm to be here to help humanity. And we are all three of us here supporting each other and helping each other through our experiences to understand because this is our mission. This is our mission is to assist and help humanity. So, you know, and, and with the Kundalini awakening, that scared me to death. I did not quite understand it. I didn't ask for it, but they gave me that because to do what I'm doing and to put myself out to the world, they wanted me to know where my downloads are coming from. They wanted me to know it was my affirmation. And they wanted me to understand and let my subconscious open up into my reality. Yeah. Well, it's I, I love what you're saying in terms of people, you know, checking in and that it's an inner it's an it inner is. connection that is really going to be paramount when people I think are it having is. these experiences. I had a, a spiritual teacher and author, uh, Maureen St. Germain, has been on the show a few times. Mm -hmm. And she advised for people who are having, whether it's ET contact or okay, spirit long. contact or whatever it is, but when they feel some sort of outside influence coming into their energy fields, to assert, I welcome forth those who are aligned with 100% God source light. That's and, a good plan. Yeah. And I've been adopting this because I'll hear, you know, I'll hear tones change in my, in my hearing. Like I'll feel like you were talking about feeling yeah. those 
changes to frequency. Like I, I also am sensitive to being able to discern when, when energy is changing in my own inner realm. And so I will utilize that where I'll say, okay, I accept if it's 100% God source light. And sometimes it'll stop and sometimes yeah. it'll continue going. But I like that that's so useful on the fly. Like if I'm not in a meditation and I can't like really tune in and to the fine subtleties, it's like this fail safe to say like, you can continue. I'll accept it if you are completely aligned with 100% God light. And if not, you're not welcome. And then to feel the difference, you know, it's like right. either it stops yep. or it, you yeah. know, continues. Well, on. also in the extraterrestrial interdimensional realm, Unless you're of a direct soul contract or lineage, which some of these adoptees made a soul contract for me, I am direct lineage. They do not interfere because it is a cosmic law. They do not overstep their boundary. So that's why I keep emphasizing that I know that they're benevolent, but I do agree people should question until you're. In, you know, until you're sure in your own mind, you should not take a risk. But from my experiences and 64 years of touching, feeling, loving, and meeting all of these races, this negativity and these negative whatever is, they are not from that, from extraterrestrials or interdimensionals, and they are here trying to help us. But with that said, I think we should we should ask for affirmations and state that we want beautiful, positive things that will help us in our evolution. You know, if it's not welcomed by our soul, we don't want, you know. Right. And yeah. to your point, just, you know, that may be the case now that we are under like the negative forces that we're under now are more human. But there's a lot of evidence that historically on this planet that has not been the case. We have been puppeted by extraterrestrials with the dark agenda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is possible. And I would say I would go back to how you began your experience of this has been my experience in my world of what I have had access to. Mm -hmm. And we can't assume that just because for you, you've been able to yeah. parse out that, okay, these are benevolent forces who are mm -hmm. in my, you know, it's a vast universe yeah. that we don't have complete access to. So yeah. I don't want people to hear your story and be like, oh, okay, well, I've got a reptilian that makes me really uncomfortable who's been in my dreams for all this time. And, but it must be for my highest good. Maybe it is, but, you know, yeah. use your discernment, what you're yeah. ready for. And we are calling the shots as, you know, we have that empowerment as humans yeah. to yeah. come They have introduced me to what they call, or we call, Archons and whatever. But in, Archons, in that experience, yeah. yeah, in that experience, they wanted me to feel sorry for it because and the reality that they put me in with the experience of it, and I was with the female gray, it was suffering. It was suffering because it could not evolve any further than what it was because of its negativity. And so I think that that's part of what they're trying. I, you know, every day I, I understand more and more about this stuff, but I think that is a way of them trying to tell me that, Staying in a negative frame of thought will be the demise of a civilization because that archon could not continue as it was because no one paid any attention to it any longer. And, you know, it, 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 it no longer served a purpose. It could not create the fear. The fear was eliminated in their reality you know, all of these things, and it, it had no place in their world. This is the kind of the way they explained it, and they, you know, and they showed me an archon. Now, I've even got drawings of it on my website and stuff where they took me to a planet, a reality where that thing was like intermingling in with different beings, and it was a way of, and they told me, you know, I was like offended by it, and they were teaching me to sympathy, empathy, you know, so I don't know. There's, like I said, we're at a 
pivotal point where we're not only learning about ourselves, but we're also learning about how we perceive things and that we can't necessarily fall back on old ways because we're moving into a new world with new ways our our planet Earth is ascending and changing. We are changing and ascending. And with that, we have to have new ways of thinking and new ways of perceiving our world and new ways of living because a lot of our old ways no longer serve humanity. So we have to be careful and cautious with these things and not jump to the first thing that's available. That is absolutely for sure. But we can't close doors either. Yeah. Yeah. It's all a balance. And and I love how you've been talking about the the vibrational frequency and how it all that's what it all comes back to is that we are shifting our own frequency and the the planet is shifting its frequency. I just heard a quote yesterday, um, or maybe somebody just said it off the top of their head, but they said, um, don't roll around in the mud and then complain about being dirty. You know, so it is like if we're willingly kind of engaging in those in the fear, in the um, in the the sorrow, in the anger, if we're choosing to continue to go back. If you're negative, it draws more negative aspects. If you're positive, it draws more beautiful aspects, opens more opportunities. And this negative not only does it draw more, but there's no growth, no opportunity to evolve. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, Nancy, can you tell people how they can find out more about you? Yes. Um, my website is timefordisclosure.com and my Facebook group is Time for Disclosure slash we have never been alone slash we are the disclosure because I think us human beings waking up and figuring out our inner soul selves and making it a part of who we are and not letting the program world influence us is the true disclosure here. So thank you for having me. And I'll thank you for all that listened and, you know, choose, choose your own soul path and ask your subconscious to help you make your decisions. Beautiful. Thank you so much, You're Nancy. So thank you for listening to this episode of Meditation Conversation. I'd be so grateful if you would share this episode with someone in your life who would appreciate it. Your sharing helps build momentum and make high vibrational content such as this more accessible and easier to find. And I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to this content. Thank you for your support and I look forward to the next meditation conversation.